Oshkosh Media is government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. How you doing there, folks? Welcome to the City Manager's Report. My name is Jake Tim from Oshkosh Media, and in a moment, we'll be joined by our City Manager, Mark Roloff. In the first half of the show today, we'll dive into hot topics, talk about some things that are going on around the city, then we'll take a little break, and we'll go over the Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, November 28th. And with that, we bring in our City Manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, thanks for being here with us. Great to be here, Jake. Uh, th always good to have you here with us. Uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, the holiday season is here. That doesn't mean that the, the city takes a break. So we're, uh, we're very busy as usual. And the first thing we're going to start off with today uh, is we're going to talk about uh, the fact that the city has, has joined another program when it comes to addressing lead service lines for, for water. Yeah, we sure have. Uh, you know, we've been working on a lead service uh, line replacement program for a number of years now. And uh, just earlier this month on November 2nd, uh, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, held a press conference uh, and a roundtable discussion in Kenosha regarding its new lead service line replacement accelerator program. And this is really designed for communities that need some additional assistance to meet regulatory requirements with the EPA's lead and copper rule. And a lot of people, you know, kind of take for granted, but we are one of the oldest cities in the, in the state of Wisconsin, so we have more lead service lines, you know, than, than a lot of other cities. Uh, you, when you think of all the pre-1960 construction, that pretty much says that we've got lead service lines. So the video you see here is when we were starting to replace a lot of those lead service lines. And the idea behind this program uh, is the ultimate goal of removing all lead piping in the drinking water supply. And so the first step is really to identify what material each service line is made of and we have to actually have to have that done by october of next year so we uh we really got to get on the ball on that and and let the public know about it which is why we're talking about it so often but we were selected as one of 10 communities in the state to be included in this initiative so we're real uh we're real happy that we're going to be able to do this but we know there's a lot of interest in this program so if you want to get your service line checked there's the number 920-232 5336, or you can always check oshkoshwater.com uh, or uh, the Oshkosh Water Survey link here. Yeah, you mentioned that website, oshkoshwater.com. That'll take you to the city website and give you more information on the lead service line replacement program. You can schedule that inspection. You can get a hold of the folks uh, that can, uh, can help you out and point you in the right direction. So check out the city website at that link. Again, that's oshkoshwater.com. And this program really is intended to provide some financial incentives. So we can cover you know, up to half the program costs. And if you're low or moderate income, you might even uh, get as much as the, the entire thing covered. So please don't let costs be a barrier to you. Uh, it's in the interest of your, of your family, particularly kids, that we get water uh, let out of the water supply. So uh, we want to help you every way we can. All right, great. So again, oshkoshwater.com or that number that Mark mentioned earlier for more information. Uh, next thing we'll talk about, Mark, speaking of safety, uh, the city has deployed what we call rectangular rapidly flashing beacons. I said it so you don't have to, uh, in various locations in the city, but we've taken another step in a couple of other locations. Yeah, uh, there's over on Whitsell Avenue, which is probably one of the wider intersections that has an unprotected crosswalk. Uh, we installed this right there at West, Witzel and Westbrook. Uh, but these beacons assist you and uh, pedestrians to cross the street with added safety and visibility. And, you know, even though the, the, the speed limit may not be that much, it's, it's so much wider out there. So you can see that the, this really does work. The cars are much more responsive when they see the RRFBs flashing there. Uh, and so you can see the, the demonstration we have here that the vehicles really do recognize those. And so these beacons assist the pedestrians across the street with safety and visibility. And uh, we actually had an accident at this very intersection a few years ago. So we wanted to make sure that that was taken care of. And then we also partners with, with, partnered with Lourdes High School. Uh, they had wanted one on Jocelyn Street, which isn't a very high traffic intersection, but for the folks at, at Lourdes, they felt it was important enough. So uh, they funded the, um, the equipment itself and our folks uh, did all the installation uh, at no cost. So 
we were able to get another one there over on Jocelyn, uh, which should help uh, pedestrians in that area as well. Great partnership there um, and uh, just helping to keep pedestrians safe throughout the city. Uh, speaking of partnerships, um, the Oshkosh Police Department recently held its Citizens Academy. Uh, 16 community men members participated in the program, and uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it's a six-week program that actually has been sort of um, on the back burner for a couple of years, partially due to COVID, partially due to we had gone through a lot of people that were interested. But now there's a whole new generation of people interested in learning more about the Oshkosh Police Department. So this is a program where you can get hands-on experience in a whole variety of areas in the uh, police service, including SWAT, our drone operations, crisis negotiations, as well as learning about the Oshkosh Auxiliary uh, 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 Police. So one of the highlights of the Academy is the ride along with an officer. And that gives our participants an up close and personal look at the life of an officer on the job. So uh, we're going to continue to have this program. It's been very well received. Uh, you can see the different situations that we expose our participants in there. So if you're interested, you know, please contact the Oshkosh Police Department. Uh, they'll uh, put you on the list for the next time we run the academy. And I think they're going to try to run it once or even twice a year. So uh, we certainly want people to learn more about the police department. And this is a great way to do it. Yeah, great opportunity to get educated on everything our police department does in the community. So uh, moving on, well, now we'll move on to the fire department, Mark. Uh, the food and toy drive, the annual Oshkosh Fire Department food and toy drive, it's that time of year, and they've announced their dates for this year. Yeah, you sure can. We're shifting gears into holiday season, and our fire department sponsors the the food and toy drive. And you can see that the here are some of the dates that are up there. It's really about uh, donating non-perishable food, unwrapped toys, wrapping paper, cash. Uh, it's those things that uh, will be donated to the Salvation Army and distributed through their uh, distribution program. Uh, and as well as the monetary donations that the firefighters will accept. They'll give that to the Oshkosh Firefighters Charitable Trust. And there's also a scholarship program, uh, Gary Kasubi scholarship program, that they use for people that are interested in fire service. So once again, you know, we're at the, we operate out of the different stations. And so you saw some of the, the locations that will be there. And if your fire, if, if you're in the neighborhood of that fire station, then uh, we'll be walking the streets out there. And again, the, the, the routes begin at 5 p.m. and they're gonna be starting on Wednesday, November 29th, and then in December, uh, December 4th, which is a Monday, that'll be out of Station 15, which is downtown just near North Side. Um, Thursday, December 7th at Station 16, that's West Side. And uh, December 11th, Station 19 and 17, that's pretty much the North Side. And then Station 18 on December 12th, uh, that's just east of uh, Bowen Street, so sort of the east, northeast side. So we got uh, all the stations covered, and uh, we're so uh, proud of our fire department, our, our um, fire department personnel volunteer their time to do this, and uh, they bring their kids along, and uh, there's some wonderful stories that I've seen over the years. They've, they've dragged me out on the street a few times to, uh, to check it out, and uh, it's a it's a wonderful cause, and I think it demonstrates that our firefighters, while they're public servants in terms of public safety, they care about this community deeply. And this is just one way that they can give back, and they do this all the time. There are so many other things that they do, but we really highlight it when we uh, talk about the uh, the food and toy drive. So kudos to those uh, folks for for volunteering their time for a very, uh, a very good cause. Yeah, fantastic effort by our Oshkosh Fire Department. If you want to see uh, routes, maps, where these are taking place, you heard Mark list off where the stations were. But if you want to see the routes and maps and uh, where they'll be, you can follow and like uh, OFD Food and Toy Drive on Facebook and Instagram. So check that out. All right, we're in the holiday spirit, Mark, so we'll move on. There's some, uh, some big news. It's not news necessarily for Oshkosh Celebration of Lights, but believe it or not, They'll be open uh, while this show is on the air. Yes, they sure will. Uh, Celebration Lights opens Friday, November 24th. For this year, it's going to be at a new location. It's going to be over on the EAA grounds. Um, this is the 22nd annual event, and because of the archaeological work being done at Menominee Park, the road's not open, folks, so don't drive over there. You'll just be disappointed. 
it's going to be over at the EAA grounds. And so we want to make sure that you know where it's at. If you're a regular EAA goer, you're probably, for the flying, you're probably very familiar with it. But the entrance is off of Poberesny Road where the Air Venture Camping is located. If you really want to know where to punch it in on your GPS, it's 1858. It's pronounced Neuntuffel, but look at the spelling. So we put there right there to punch into your GPS, and that'll get you right there. You know, once you start seeing the lines uh, of cars, you'll know you're in the right place. Um, and uh, for this year, the price per car is twenty dollars. It's only fifteen dollars if you bring a hygiene or food item to donate. So that's something that uh, uh, is pretty much the same as in prior years. Uh, Similar, they do not allow attendees to walk through. They, it's drive-through as it, it, it is over at uh, Menominee Park. And there's also that horse pole wagon ride that they, they offer to folks that may want that outdoor experience if, that, if that's what you're into. And of course, our friends at Oshkosh Media are gonna be uh, playing their music on uh, FM 101.9 to provide that holiday music background for everything. That's right. That music starts this weekend as well on Oshkosh FM 101.9. So if you're enjoying Celebration of Lights or if you're just in the car doing your holiday shopping or any anything kind of bopping around town, please do tune in Oshkosh FM 101.9. And if you want more information on Celebration of Lights, that website is oshkoshcol.org or look for Oshkosh Celebration of Lights on Facebook. And it's a great volunteer program. Everybody who does Celebration of Lights, they are all volunteers. And uh, it really says something about our community that uh, they're so, uh, you know, they love our community so much that they want the families to enjoy the holidays. And so uh, I want to thank the Celebration of Light folks and thank them for their patience. And, you know, they moved on a dime to get it moved over to the EAA grounds. I want to thank EAA, uh, Jack Pelton, their CEO. I just chatted with him briefly uh, just the other day, and he, they were more than happy to be able to accommodate this and uh, hopefully we'll be able to have it right back in Menominee Park next year. It's always recognized as one of the best light displays in the state. Uh, they had to find a new home this year, but they're, they're keeping it going, so good to see. All right, we've talked about the fun stuff and the happy stuff for, for the holiday season. Now let's talk about snow. Uh, it's winter's around the corner, and we just wanted to remind folks how the snow removal process works for sidewalks. Yeah, we, you know, for snow removal, especially in our residential areas, the property owners are required to clear sidewalks from their uh, budding their property from snow and ice within 24 hours after the end of the precipitation or accumulation. Please know that the city does not go out looking for violators. Somebody must call it in for us to initiate it. But once we do that, we will look up and down the block to make sure out of fairness to everybody else that we do that. So please know that. Um, we ask that you not cover the fire hydrants when you do that. And if you can, if you can, if you can shovel out a hydrant, that might help you if there's ever an event, fire event at your house or in your neighbor's areas. Um, the snow removal does require uh, all the handicap ramps and the crosswalk accesses, which are adjacent to your property. I live on a corner. I know what it is. So I know what everybody goes through. And uh, that's part of, part of what our laws are. We also ask, in addition to not covering the fire hydrants, please don't th throw the snow back into the street. You're really just creating a vicious cycle that you don't want to start. So, um, and then we just ask you also to keep, be mindful of keeping stormwater in those clear of snow if you want to get out there and do that. That helps drain things faster, which prevents big puddles and, and all those nasty things that when we start thawing, I say when we start thawing, it'll just make the, the thawing process and uh, uh, much easier and it'll minimize flooding out there. So, and here's the tough part. Uh, failure to clear your sidewalks will result in the city's contractor. If somebody calls you out and we inspect it and you haven't done it, we're gonna go out there and clear it and our contractor will clear it. I would love the goal of not charging anybody a single dime for this. But unfortunately, this is something that we have to pay, and the cost has been going up in recent years. We have a small processing fee, but pretty much you're paying what the contractor is charging us. So uh, that you have to do. The current rate is a minimum of $173. I beg of you, please don't don't put us in a situation where we got to send you a bill. I'd love to have zero of these done for the year, but we will charge you, and that's just. That's in keeping with our ordinance and it's out of fairness for everybody. Yeah, we've had a trace of snow in our area already, but uh, more to come, of course. Yeah. So please do that. 
All right. Um, speaking of uh, of seasonal topics here, Mark, this one, uh, folks may be watching this show uh, on Monday or Tuesday after the Thanksgiving holiday, but just in case, we wanted to give everybody an update on what the holiday uh, hours and reminders are from the sanitation department and some other areas in the city around the Thanksgiving holiday. Right. Uh, there'll be no garbage and recycling pickup on Thanksgiving Day uh, November 23rd. Pickup moved back one day. So Thursday moved to Friday. Friday pickup moves to Saturday. City Hall, Library, Museum, and the Yard Waste Drop-Off Center are closed on Thanksgiving Day, uh, but open on Friday. And there's no bus service on GO Transit on Thanksgiving Day either. So that's, that's the Thanksgiving stuff. And then uh, regular brush pickup uh, will occur December 4th through the 8th uh, on your regular garbage collection days. So if you got any brown paper bags with old leaves or you know any other brush that needs to get picked up uh, please be aware of that the winter hours for the yard waste drop-off center are going to take effect on december 1 through the end of march the winter hours are 7 a.m to 3 p.m just monday through friday so please be aware of that and then uh the uh like i said everything's going to be closed on the 25th uh and reopen on friday all right great thanks for the updates and just keep that in mind as you're planning to get your yard work done and uh in your garbage and recycling as well. Uh, one more update before we take a break here, Mark. Something uh, nice to end on a happy note here. The Downtown Oshkosh Holiday Parade is coming up on Thursday, November 30th. It sure is. There's going to be uh, live music and the tree lighting in the Opera House Square from 5 to 6 p.m. And then there's a new event this year called the Jolly Jog where there will be some folks running the course of the parade itself. So the parade won't actually start until about 6.30 p.m. And that begins at North Main and CP, heads north to North Main and Irving. So this year's parade theme is the Nutcracker, which we're really excited about. Kind of cross plugs with everything going on over at the Payne Art Center. And you can watch for televised coverage later on Oshkosh Media Life TV. Yeah. Uh, it'll be on Life TV. That's uh, Spectrum Cable Channel 2. And uh, it's always one of our most watched programs of the year, Mark. So we, we love that folks tune in and check that out. It'll be on the YouTube channel as well. Oshkosh Media Life TV also available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, all the places you can find us. I think that's it for this, uh, yeah. this part of the show, huh? Yeah, it went like a flash. That's it for the first half there, Mark. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will discuss some, some items from the Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda from Tuesday, November 28th, and we'll be right back. City Manager's Report. I'm Jake Tim, along with our City Manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, let's dive right into the Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, November 28th. One of the first items that we're going to be talking about today is a resolution to approve the 2024 Business Improvement District, otherwise known as the BID, Operating Plan and Budget. Yeah, by state law, the BID is created by a downtown property owners, mostly businesses, and uh, they have to present their budget and their proposed a levy that they're going to a, a special charge they assess themselves and that must be approved by the council and it needs to be done before tax bills go out because that special charge gets put on all of the downtown properties that are within the business improvement district and the council uh, can only approve or deny this they can't amend it this is something that the the bid board which consists of members of the district themselves they're the ones that uh, uh, put the budget together in their operating plan. So that'll be going to the council for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm not aware that they've done a thumbs down, so <laughs> I suspect it'll be approved. And there's been discussions recently, so the council's familiar with what uh, the bid's up to. Sure, and some folks might remember there was an item about the bid on the last council agenda. How did what happened with that affect this budget plan? Yeah, well, it did affect this budget because they were making a request to uh, get some uh, American Rescue Plan or ARPA funds. Council turned down that request, so the bid has adjusted their budget that it doesn't reflect it in there. But uh, I think that group's very resilient. I think they identified some promotions that they can still do that they would like to do. They were looking to become self-sufficient on this after three years, and they're just going to have to try to figure out a way to 
to live without those funds until they can figure out another funding mechanism for them to get promotions. And they're trying to expand uh, the amount of work they do, do more promotions. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sure we'll be hearing from them soon about uh, what some other future plans they might have. All right. Thanks for the update on that. Move on to another resolution. This is to approve the purchase of some lighting poles and fixtures. This project says it's for the Wagyu Avenue reconstruction, Mark, but this is kind of more about advanced planning than it is about just one project. It really is. Uh, we've got a lot of items on the agenda to get ready for uh, our capital improvement plan for 2024. The budget was adopted at the last meeting, so now the staff is starting to get things in order. But lighting is probably a great example of that because our lighting... Uh, really needs to get ordered months in advance and we don't necessarily award the bid until March. Well, sometimes the lead time on these lights and you can see all the lighting fixtures that are involved in a project with this video. This is from Algoma Boulevard last year. Sometimes the lead time is six months for these things. And so if we waited until the bid was awarded, we wouldn't get them until the end of the project. As you can see, a lot of these lights, you know, you're digging that up right in the middle of the project. We want to get them in before the project is done and then it just makes the project move uh, much smoother and it also uh, enables us to purchase them on sort of off times where we can get a better discount. So we are purchasing all the lighting that we're going to need for the Wagyu project right now and so we'll let the contractors know we already have the lights that we want you to install. All you got to do is install them. So it really makes the project go much smoother which is part of us getting that advanced planning done. So a lot of items on the agenda are all part of getting ready for uh, next spring and summer construction season. Makes sense to have all of your materials on hand when you start a job. So good advanced planning. All right, let's move on to the next. There's a big chunk of uh, special assessments in on this agenda, Mark. Um, several resolutions approving initial uh, resolutions for special assessments in a bunch of different areas of the city. Right. Well, you know, the council is still, you know, deciding what to do with special assessments. So we have to plan in advance, and so we do these initial resolutions to tell people you might be subject to special assessments. And so this is part of our process of, of getting our streets redone, and we've got several projects that we're looking at for 2024. I'm just going to highlight a few of them. Uh, Wagyu Avenue, which I know a lot of people on the uh, the near, uh, you know, north side are very uh, pleased to see that. This is going to be from North Main Street to Mill Street, pretty much. There'll be cross streets done and things like that, but that's really the crux of it. And Wagyu, as you know, is, is pretty rough street, so long overdue, and we've got some uh, ancient uh, utilities down there more than 100 years old, so Wagyu is long overdue, and uh, we're pleased to do that one. Uh, the other project that we're going to be working on is on the near south side, and that's uh, that square there uh, bound by uh, Iowa on the east, Michigan on the west, 5th Avenue on the north, and 7th Avenue on the south. So that square of street projects will be done, and I know uh, with everything that's been going on there near uh, where Theta Care is going to be building a new micro hospital. Uh, the folks have been very patient. They're waiting for, for what's going to happen. This uh, We're not doing six because that's where a lot of the construction is going to be, but we're going to get some of these residential areas that, frankly, are long overdue, and I know the residents out there who've been bugging me for probably 12 of my 15 years with the city. Uh, it's coming, folks, and I'm glad to finally uh, get that done uh, for you because I know it's, uh, it's long overdue. And then lastly, Cherry Street. Uh, this is just north of the university. Cherry Street from Irving up to New York kind of you know, parallels some of the work we uh, did there on McKinley this past year. Um, but Cherry Street is another one that's in pretty rough shape. Uh, we're going to be doing some of the cross streets there, uh, but it's really going to be about Cherry Street, and you'll see that disruption coming to a to that neighborhood come uh, summer of 2024. So those are the big ones that we got planned for next year. And uh, again, we do comprehensive uh, utilities, uh, so uh, water, sanitary sewer, storm sewer, as well as uh, the street itself. So all of them need to get done and they're all long overdue. Yeah, and you can check out the city's website. We have an interactive map there on what projects are being done as far as road projects go. So check that out if you want to see about more about these projects or the streets in your neighborhood. We'll move on to the next resolution, Mark. This one is a intergovernmental collaboration between the city and the county for hazmat response services. The, uh, we are very proud of our fire department. They are the regional hazardous material agent response agency. So the state gives us a little bit of money, and in return we provide... Uh, this service to 
uh, anyone in our region when there's a, a hazmat call. Um, this is an example of some of the training we do uh, to prepare for these things because you never know when they're going to happen and our folks need to be ready. So we're very pleased with um, the intergovernmental agreement we have with Winnebago County and we're happy to provide this service and the, the state makes us whole on the cost we have. All right, great. Thanks for the update on that. Uh, next, under new ordinances, we've got an ordinance to cancel the December 26, 2023 meeting, and this is just something that the council traditionally does every year. Yeah, we've been doing this r routinely uh, probably for about 10 years now where we, uh, it's, it's so close to the Christmas holidays and, you know, either a council member or a staff member uh, will either be off or out of town, so we just cancel the meeting. This has to be two readings, so you'll see this on the next agenda as well, but just please note that our last meeting of the year will be December 12th. All right, understood. And as always, you can catch that December 12th meeting on GovTV here from Oshkosh Media. We'll move on now to new resolutions, Mark. There is a, a, a resolution that is opposing legislation that would subject municipal stormwater utilities to regulation by the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin. So what is, what is this all about? Well, I know that there are a lot of people who are genuinely concerned about our stormwater rates. And I would say that when uh, I was hired by the city in 2008, the council gave me a clear mandate. I got hired immediately after those terrible storms in 2008. And since that time, we have put in a number of stormwater facilities to address uh, the, the flooding that we've had throughout the city. Um, and the council has had to raise our rates quite significantly to get all these projects done. Uh, unfortunately, there's some belief that uh, having this, the stormwater rates uh, regulated by a state agency is better than having your local elected officials set those rates. And I think our council recognizes the, the, the significant responsibility they have. They're not willy-nilly increasing rates. They're doing it based on getting all of these projects done, which address flooding throughout the city. Unfortunately, and it's our, some of our local state representatives have introduced this legislation. I would respectfully disagree with them. My experience uh, from my years doing this is that generally when the Public Service Commission looks at the rates, they will increase the rates greater than we would ourselves. So I, th I think it's a bad idea and I would encourage people after the council adopts this to contact your state representative and let them know uh, that, that you were against this. Senator Fine and, Senator, and, and Assembly Member Shra have introduced this legislation and I think they need to know about this. Former Mayor Paul Mary, who's now our state assembly representative, is aware of this, and, and I've explained this to her, and she understands it. All right, great. Well, thank you for the details on that. And the last thing we're going to talk about under new resolutions, Mark, is uh, the item to approve a resolution for the city of Oshkosh to officially join the Wisconsin Local Government Climate Coalition. So what is this organization, and what is it that their mission is? Well, I'm going to start and uh, first thank the Sustainability Advisory Board. They've adopted their uh, sustainability plan, which was approved by the council. And part of it is to be more engaged in statewide efforts. And so the Wisconsin Local Government Climate Coalition really is local governments working together to uh, assist uh, reaching some of the state's goals. And some of the goals are uh, to retire coal plants by 2040 and the state to be carbon free by 2050. Those are some ambitious goals and part of the, the purpose of this group is to make sure that we're aware of these things, doing everything we can in public education uh, and looking at best practices to help reduce uh, our carbon footprint. We certainly want to do that uh, and that's a challenge. This is, these goals, just you just don't snap your fingers and get it done. They take a lot of planning and I think the the Sustainability Advisory Board wants us to get ahead of it uh, and work with other local governments to share ideas and best practices on how we can do that. So uh, we've got about you know 17 years to beat the first goal and 27 for the other. So we've got time, but uh, the clock's ticking on us. Yeah, time to get to work on that. All right. Well, Mark, I think that's all the time we have for today. So as always, thank you for being with us. Happy holidays. And uh, I don't always get to sit in this chair, so thanks for making it easy on me. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you and everybody out there. Have a great Thanksgiving and a holiday season as well.
All right, thanks, Mark, and thank you for watching. Once again, that Common Council meeting that's coming up is on Tuesday, November 28th. That is at 6 p.m. You can watch it live here on GovTV, that's Spectrum Cable Channel 10. You can watch it online on oshkoshmedia.org, or you can stream it live for free on the Oshkosh Media Channel on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. Listen to it on Oshkosh FM 101.9 or on the TuneIn Radio app for your mobile devices. And as always, make sure you follow Oshkosh Media and the City of Oshkosh Government page on Facebook. Thanks again for joining us on your City Manager's Report, and we'll see you next time.